So you want to be able to say, I am the law, playing as Judge Dredd in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. If you want to build a lawful creature, you definitely want to build a paladin, but Judge Dredd uses a firearm pretty much the entire time. So we're going to figure out how to make a solid ranged paladin that feels like Judge Dredd, and we got to start with the race. Variant human would be a good choice because you can get a feat right at first level, but Judge Dredd is actually a clone, and he's a clone of a founder of the overall judge system. So instead of Variant Human, we're actually going to go with a Reborn. Reborns even have a feature called Reborn in the Domains of Dread, and the domain you can choose is Lamordia, which makes it so your whole origin is that you awake amid bizarre experiments by a moral scientist, which fit way too well for Judge Dread in order to go with anything else. When you choose this race, you get an Ancestral Legacy. This would allow you to regain some features of an original race, but we're going to just take the default, which gives us two skills of our choosing. So we're going to take Intimidation and Perception. This race also gives you the feature Deathless Nature, so you have advantage on saving throws against disease and being poisoned, and you have resistance to poison damage. You have advantage on death saving throws. You don't need to eat, drink, or breathe, but that doesn't feel quite as right for Judge Dread. And you don't need sleep, and magic can't put you to sleep. Not only that, but you can finish a long rest in four hours. Then when it comes to a background, we're obviously going to choose City Watch. This gives us skill proficiency in insight and athletics. Then when it comes to some starting stats, we are going to be focusing on a ranged paladin. So in order to do that, we're not going to be using much strength, only bringing it to 10. This has one major downside, and that's that you can't multi-class if you don't have at least 13 in strength being a paladin. But that's okay because you're a very lawful paladin and you're going to be sticking paladin the whole way. With focusing on ranged attacks, we need a decent amount of dexterity, so we're going to put 14 points into there. We need to be able to take some hits, so we're going to put 15 points into constitution. And then we're a paladin, we need some charisma, so we're going to put 15 points into charisma. Then, thanks to choosing a reborn race, we can put one point into three different scores. So we're going to boost up our dexterity, constitution, and charisma by one. That leaves our intelligence and wisdom dumped down to eight. Then, obviously, we're going to be jumping into the Paladin class. This gives us proficiency in all armor and shields, as well as all weapons. It gives us saving throws and wisdom and charisma, and then we get to choose two more skills. There's not really many skills left for a Paladin that would fit for Judge Dredd, so I guess we'll just take Persuasion and Medicine. When you take your first level in Paladin, you get Divine Sense, so you can actually smell evil around you, especially if they're Celestial, Fiend, or Undead, which might not work in the Dread Universe, but in d d it could be pretty helpful. Additionally, at first level, you get Lay on Hands, so you can restore a number of hit points equal to five times your Paladin level. And if you use at least five of those points at once, you can cure one disease or poison. Then at second level of Paladin, you get a Fighting Style, and pretty much no Paladin Fighting Style involves ranged weapons. They're all about using a shield or a melee weapon, so the only thing that's really going to benefit us is taking the Defense Fighting Style, which is actually going to be slightly more helpful, because with our lower strength, we have to rely on medium armor. Also at second level of Paladin you get some spell casting, but we'll save all the spells for the end of this build. The last thing you get from second level of Paladin is Divine Smite. There's one major downside here, which is that Divine Smite requires a melee weapon. So unfortunately, we're basically never going to be able to use this. But that's okay, because that frees up our spell slots for actual spell casting. Then at third level of Paladin you get Divine Health, making you immune to disease, and you get a Sacred Oath, otherwise known as a subclass. And there's actually three solid choices. Oath of Devotion, because you're devoted to the law, and that would allow us to use our channel divinity to make our weapon a sacred weapon, boosting our accuracy with it equal to our charisma modifier, which is one of the few paladin features that would help us in ranged attacks. But outside of that one thing, it doesn't really help us. So no to the Devotion Paladin. Another great choice is an Oathbreaker, simply for the play on words, because they get a channel divinity option called Dreadful Aspect, and their max level feature is called Dread Lord. But they are way too focused on raising undead to make them a viable option. So instead, we're going to choose the Oath of Vengeance. One of the tenets of Vengeance is even that there is no mercy for the wicked, and that feels pretty fitting for Judge Dredd, and when you choose this subclass, you get some Oath spells, but again, we're going to focus on all the spells at the end, and you get access to Channel Divinity. So when you use your Channel Divinity, you can use Abjure Enemy, frightening your enemy for one minute, which considering you're Judge Dredd, you're pretty damn intimidating.
intimidating, so I think that fits. And while that creature is frightened, its speed is zero. And even if it succeeds on a wisdom saving throw it makes against this feature, its speed is still halved for one minute. The only downside is that once it takes damage, this whole thing just wipes away. Another more helpful option for your channel divinity is Vow of Enmity. So as a bonus action, you can target a creature within 10 feet of you, and you gain advantage on all of your attack rolls against it for one minute. And this is going to be pretty helpful for all of your ranged attacks, because as long as they're within 10 feet of you when you use this ability, it continues to stay active even if they move out of that range. There's actually one more optional use of your channel divinity, which Wizards of the Coast added in later, called Harness Divine Power. This is totally optional, so ask your dungeon master if it's okay, but it allows you to use your channel divinity to fuel your spell. So as a bonus action, you can touch your holy symbol, which in this case we'll just say is your badge, and it allows you to regain one expended spell slot, the level of which can be no more than half of your proficiency bonus rounded up. But you can actually use this more often than any other channel divinity, because you can use this once at third level, twice at seventh level, and three times at 15th level. Then at fourth level of Paladin, you get an ability score improvement. And we're gonna take a feat. We are very focused on ranged attacks, and Judge Dredd has a badass gun. So we're gonna take the feat Gunner. If your D&D table doesn't allow for firearms, you can just as easily swap this out with Crossbow Expert. You just might have to tweak your ability scores. Because Gunner does increase your dexterity score by one, gives you proficiency with firearms, and you get to ignore the loading property with firearms. And finally, when you're within five feet of a hostile creature, it doesn't impose disadvantage on your ranged attack rolls. One of the most helpful of these features is ignoring the loading property, because having to load a weapon means that you would only be able to fire once per turn. And at fifth level of Paladin, you get extra attack, allowing you to attack twice instead of once per action. And I know we miss out on using our Divine Smite, but firearms can actually do a considerable amount of damage, especially if you're able to shoot twice. Old school firearms like pistols and muskets can deal 1d10 or 1d12 damage per shot. More modern firearms can actually up that damage. Automatic pistols do 2d6 per shot, revolvers do 2d8, hunting rifles do 2d10, and then automatic rifles and shotguns both do 2d8. But Judge Dread is set in the future, so if your table allows you to use a futuristic firearm, that's going to up your damage even further. Because if you can use a laser pistol, you deal 3d6 radiant damage per shot. If you can use a laser rifle, you get 3d8 radiant damage per shot. And if they allow you to use an antimatter rifle, it's 68 necrotic damage per shot, which is a little bit overkill. But at the very least, I would kind of assume that Judge Dread gets either a laser pistol or an automatic pistol. Then at 6th level of Paladin, you get Aura of Protection, allowing you to use your Charisma modifier and add it to every one of your saving throws, as well as boosting any of your allies within 10 feet of you for the same effect. Then at 7th level of Paladin, you get another feature from your Oath of Vengeance, Relentless Avenger. So if you happen to hit a creature with an opportunity attack, you can then move up to half your speed immediately after the attack as part of the same reaction, just allowing you to hunt down criminals that much more effectively. Then at 8th level of Paladin, you get an Ability Score Improvement, so we're going to go ahead and boost up our dexterity by two points. Then at 9th level of Paladin, you get access to some stronger spell slots. Then at 10th level of Paladin, you get Aura of Courage. So you and any creature within 10 feet of you just can't be frightened. And this just frankly makes sense. You are the law. You are Judge Dredd. People are frightened of you, not the other way around. Then at 11th level of Paladin, you get Improved Divine Smite, which again relies on melee weapons. So we can basically forget about this feature. Then at 12th level of Paladin, we get another ability score improvement. So we're going to go ahead and max out our dexterity. Then at 13th level of Paladin, we get some stronger spells, and at 14th level of Paladin, you get Cleansing Touch. So you can use your action to end one spell on yourself or a willing creature. Then at 15th level of Paladin, you get another feature from your Oath of Vengeance, Soul of Vengeance. So now when you use that channel divinity to use Vow of Enmity, giving you advantage on all of your attack rolls, you can now use your reaction to make a melee weapon attack against that creature if it's within range, just giving you access to one additional attack. Again, this is melee attacks though. So unless you feel like punching a creature or you just happen to have a weapon in your offhand, we're not gonna be using this very much. Then at 16th level of Paladin, you get another ability score improvement. And since we just had to ignore a couple features that would help our melee attacks, let's go ahead and boost our ranged attacks a bit to make up for it with another feat. And we're gonna take 
sharpshooter. This makes it so attacking at long range doesn't impose disadvantage. Your ranged weapon attacks get to ignore half cover and three quarters cover as if you're shooting straight through the wall to hit whatever targets you need to. And before you make an attack with a ranged weapon you're proficient with, you can choose to take a minus five penalty to the attack roll, hurting your accuracy. But in exchange, you get a plus 10 to the attack's damage. Then at 17th level of Paladin, you get some stronger spells. And then at 18th level of Paladin, your aura of protection and your aura of courage increase in range up to 30 feet, being able to help some allies a little further away. Then at 19th level of Paladin, we get another ability score improvement. And I was very tempted to go ahead and take Tough to give us some more hit points, but I want to make sure you're that much more accurate when using your ranged attacks, allowing us to use that sharpshooter ability a bit more. So, we're going to take another feat, and we're going to take Fighting Initiate. This allows us to choose a fighting style from the Fighter class. So now, we get to choose the fighting style, Archery, giving us a plus two bonus to our ranged weapon attack rolls, helping our accuracy. And between that and your Vow of Enmity, you should be able to more than make up for that minus five penalty and be able to use Sharpshooter pretty reliably. Then at 20th level of Paladin, you get one more feature from your Oath of Vengeance, Avenging Angel. So you can use your action to understand undergo a transformation for an hour. You sprout wings, giving you a flying speed of 60 feet, which is a little hard to relate to Judge Dredd, but I guess you can say that you're still riding that badass motorcycle thing and it's flying. But this also gives you the ability to emanate an aura of menace in a 30 foot radius around you. And the first time any creature in that aura starts its turn there, that creature must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be frightened of you for one minute or until it takes damage. And additionally, any attack rolls you make against any frightened creature are always gonna have advantage. So basically you're just intimidating as hell, scaring the crap out of all of your enemies and you can hit them much more easily. But now let's jump into some of those spells. You get some pretty helpful spells from your Oath of Vengeance. Granting you Bane and Hunter's Mark. Hunter's Mark is going to help plenty with your ranged attack damage. You also get Hold Person and Misty Step, but one of the most helpful is that at 9th level of Oath of Vengeance Paladin, you automatically get the spell Haste. So now you can attack three times with your firearm per turn, while also getting some additional bonuses. You get a bunch of other spells from being an Oath of Vengeance, but I want to shift over the spells that I would actually choose. I always thought it was pretty badass that Dread manages to avoid getting hit, despite how massive he is. So we're going to take Shield of Faith. You need to be able to order somebody to drop their weapon so you're going to take the spell command and you need that badass motorcycle thing so you're going to want fine steed we need to be able to boost up your gun with those special bullets so we're going to take magic weapon which makes our firearm magical and gives it a plus one bonus and if you use a higher level spell slot you can boost it to a plus two focusing even more on enhancing that weapon you can also use elemental weapon which has a very similar effect but it also adds some additional elemental damage. You want to make sure you avoid dying with Death Ward. You can find an even more badass motorcycle with find greater steed, and you can enhance that weapon even further, allowing you to turn it into a holy weapon. So it deals an extra 2d8 radiant damage, and you can even dismiss this spell, dealing some additional damage to everything within 30 feet of you and blinding your enemies. But we also need a few other spells that will help us a bit more. To blast out everything around you, just think of this as some sort of rapid fire or something. You can grab the spell Destructive Wave, dealing up to 5d6 thunder damage and 5d6 radiant or necrotic damage to every creature within 30 feet of you and knocking them prone. And there's actually a bunch of other spells I would grab, but I'll save those for the character sheet. But there's one important one I feel it necessary to mention. We weren't able to use any divine smites. And there's actually tons of smite spells that paladins get access to, but all of them rely on melee attacks except for one. The fifth level spell, Banishing Smite, allows you to apply it to any weapon. So we definitely gotta take that because we gotta get some sort of smite being a paladin. Banishing Smite makes it so your weapon crackles with force and deals an extra 5d10 force damage. Additionally, if this attack reduces the target to 50 hit points or fewer, you banish it to another realm of existence. It's only banished for up to one minute, but it can really save you in a fight. If you want the full spell list, feel free to check out my Patreon. And this suggestion actually popped up over on Discord, and I just kind of felt like 
running with it. The link for our Discord is down below, but most of my requests actually come from the comments. So if you have one that you want to see, let me know down there. And if you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds, feel free to check out my Patreon, where you can get all that, as well as some other bonuses. And I want to give a special shout out to my player character patrons, Aft, Storm, Godzilla Khan, Mugen, Elisa Martinez, Anthony McDonald, Panda Milkshake, Alistar Nix, Ted Z, Andrew Nobles, Karkat Kitsune, Z13, Viral Nerevar, Kesta, The Dino 21, Chris Moak, and Benjamin. Then going above and beyond that are my Dungeon Master level patrons that I actually play D&D with, which I stream right here on YouTube. Shane Gilroy, Daniel Sweeten, Conman ZX, Cyber Society, Talon Starkey, Demiurge, Braden Aldridge, Daniel Galvin, Michael, Eric Wade, Salvador, Devin Happy, and Kilo Kilo. Then going above and beyond anything I ever imagined is my God tier level patron who helps me more than I ever expected and that's GameStake, so a special thank you to him. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to be the law and play as Judge Dredd in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition.